Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 12 The Paladin of the Holy Kingdom. The gate shook again, more violently than before. And then the battering ram struck again. One of the logs making up the gate bent heavily, and they could hear the paladin's cries of triumph even from here. While the gap was not yet big enough to let people in, they ought to be able to break the gate down completely after several more tries. Several angels flew past the gate. Nia could not see what they were doing from here, but they were probably trying to hold off the Bafic defenders. Get back, all of you. All eyes went to the source of that shout. It came from a watchtower above the gate. The angels should have taken that place. Yet, a single Bafic appeared there. However, the problem lay in what the Bafic was carrying. Get back. The Bafic shouted again. The Bafik was holding a girl, aged around six or seven, and he had a sharp blade to her throat. If you don't back off, I'll kill this human. The girl was dressed in filthy clothing, her face looked dirty too, and her body shook from side to side. Was she still alive? They could not detect any signs of life from her. It seemed to speak for how everyone inside the camp had been treated. You despicable. One of the paladins shouted. Hurry up and back off. Look. There was a commotion among the paladins. What had happened? Even Nia could not see what was happening at this range and at night. However, it was different for the Sorcerer King. The child's throat seems to be bleeding. Could it be? It was just a nick, she is not dead yet. Otherwise her value as a hostage would. Everyone, fall back. The paladins obeyed Remedio's command and moved back. Although the priests in the rear had a hard time grasping the situation, they still understood what was going on, and they pulled the angels back. At the same time, the priests ran up to Nia and the Sorcerer King. They had probably come closer to see what was going on. Further. Go further back. After the Bafik said so, the paladins began retreating slowly. They could see the Bafik hurriedly swapping positions atop the watchtower. They swapped the people who had been wounded in the earlier battle with the angels for fresh fighters. This is bad. Yes, very bad. Nia slowly raised the bow she had been lent. The Bafik seemed to be using the girl as a shield. Therefore she had a very small space in which to aim for. Killing it in one hit would be very difficult. Even so, if she did not do it, who would? I wish I'd practiced my bow skills more. Nia thought as she drew an arrow from her quiver. Just then, the Sorcerer King swiftly held out a hand, as if to block her shot. I don't intend to insult you, but you should stop. There's no longer any point to it. Just as she was about to ask what he meant, the Sorcerer King walked over to where the paladins were gathered. There was an argument raging there about how to save the girl. Priestly magic could freeze the enemy in their tracks. Many people approved of that, but spells had an effective range. Could they get into that range? Would the hostage be killed? All these questions and more flew back and forth, but there was no sign that an answer had been reached. Just then, the Sorcerer King and E arrived. How long are you going to twiddle your thumbs about this? The situation looks bad. After he spoke, the others turned to look at the Sorcerer King as one. Of course we know that. Captain, please calm down. The enemy is over there. Remedios was at the end of her tether, and Gustavo spoke to her. No, Captain Custodio. You know nothing. Since the enemy knows that hostages are effective, they'll show that this is not a threat, and they'll use her as an X. As though waiting for those words, the girl hostage's head was hacked off. They could see her bright red blood spurting even from here. The Bafik let go of the girl's body, and it crumpled weakly to the ground. Everyone was silent. Their minds refused to accept what had just happened. Remedios was the first to recover, and as she shouted, Nia came to her senses as well. You bastard. How dare you kill the hostage? Even after we obeyed your demands. Hmm. The Bafik dragged a boy in front of him this time. That's why I've got another one, see? Now back off. You shameless scumbag. Hmm. You really are an idiot, aren't you? Perhaps you'll understand after I bring another over. Remedio's clenched fist trembled mightily. Then, as though to vent her feelings, she ordered. Everyone, fall back. Also, gather up the people on horses around the sides. Move it. She could hear the sound of grinding teeth from Remedios. It was loud enough that one might think she was crushing her teeth. Vice Captain. Order them to gather here. Baba. If you don't do it, the child will die. Move. Everyone fall back. A very bad move. You've shown the enemy that hostages are effective and given them so much time to prepare. If the enemy does something to break your will to fight again, wouldn't that cause even more damage? A red-faced Remedios glared at the Sorcerer King like she was looking at the enemy. If this goes on, your surprise attack will be pointless. Also, I can hear the sounds of something moving over there. If they set up barricades, breaking them down will take more time, and things will be more troublesome. Shut up. Remedios interrupted the Sorcerer King. 
who's got an idea? A way to solve this without anyone dying, nobody said anything. Of course nobody had such a convenient solution. For instance, if they had someone adept at infiltration skills, this situation might not have arisen. However, there was nobody like that around. Even Remedios should have understood this. If her animal-like instincts analyzed the battle situation and told her there was no way, then such a method did not exist. Even so, why does she refuse to admit it? Why was she hung up on not letting a single person die? The Sorcerer King's words flashed through her mind. Was this not one of those necessary sacrifices which she mentioned? There was no way to come out of this without losing a single person, unless one had an overwhelming advantage in strength or a great deal of luck. Captain Custodio. Nia's voice sounded abnormally loud. Right now, can we not finish the fight with only a few casualties? Remedio's furious gaze shifted to Nia. The powerful emotions boiling off that mighty warrior's body made her own body tremble, but Nia was sure that she was right. There's no justice in that. Remedio shouted. Justice. That justice. The surrounding paladins remained silent. It would seem nobody was prepared to say anything. Nia felt like she was surrounded by enemies, and she unconsciously backed off, and then she felt someone's hand supporting her from behind. Looking back, she saw the Sorcerer King, as she had expected. I support Miss Baraj's opinion. He had affirmed her in a quiet voice. But to Nia, it was like a hundred million strong ovation. Shut up. Remedios barked again. However, this was not something she should be saying to a king from another country, who had come all this way to save her. There were actions which were acceptable, and actions which were unacceptable. Anger welled up in Nia's heart. What you need right now is to change the situation, not sit around and butt heads in frustration ah, it can't be helped. I shall turn things around, then. After muttering to himself, the sorcerer king turned away from them, towards the gate, and began walking. Due to his sudden movement, nobody managed to call out to him before the Bafik shouted a warning. You there, in the mask. I told you to back off, didn't I? I will not back down. What do you think a single human life means to me? Well what? Our aim is to kill every single one of the Bafik here. It doesn't matter what happens to the humans. White and magic, fireball. The sorcerer king extended his hand with a shout, and the fireball that flew forth blew away the Bafik and the boy he was holding. The enormous burst of flame also consumed the watchtower. Everyone on top had been slain by that attack. The Bafik and his hostage fell onto the sorcerer king's side of the wall. Maximize magic, shockwave. The spell which followed blasted away the half ruined gates. In addition, it scattered the Bafik who were erecting barricades behind it, blowing a huge hole into their defenses. Come, you paladins. Attack. Kill the Bafik inside to the very last man. As though awakened by his voice, Remedios came to and replied. You son of a bitch. Captain. Charge. The paladins moved forward in response to Remedios' words. Or rather, it might be more accurate to say that they had abandoned all attempts at thinking and fully subordinated themselves to her orders. Thank you your majesty. Gustavo left those words behind and moved on. After that, though the paladins and priests, the more sensible ones, at least, directed grateful looks at him. Remedios was the only one who was staring at the Sorcerer King with open displeasure. The Sorcerer King addressed Nia in a quiet voice. Miss Baraja. Did you think I would save the boy with a spell beyond your imagination? Indeed, the thought had crossed her mind. However, the Sorcerer King must have had some reason for his actions. Ah, yes, I did. It is as you say. Hmm, perhaps that might be so. The Sorcerer King nodded, and Neil listened in silence. Indeed, I could have done so. By using the various spells I have learned, saving a single boy would be a trivial task. However, I could not do that. That was because I could not allow the Baffet to see me rescue a boy. Dao crossed Nia's face for the first time, and the Sorcerer King gently explained to her. If I allowed them to know that hostages were effective against us, the prisoners inside would be used as meat shields to block our attacks in battle. The paladins would be at a loss, and they might end up being wounded or killed. Due to our dire lack of manpower, even one fewer paladin would constitute a great disadvantage, at least, according to Lanchester's laws. The Sorcerer King walked to the gate, and Nia hurried after him. On the other hand, once they know the hostages are useless, they will simply become hindrances to the Bafik. Now, when they're being attacked and the enemy is about to come through the walls, do you think they have the time to leisurely kill off their prisoners? Murdering people who can't resist ought to be a very low priority then. It is as you say. Indeed. Rather than waste time killing people, they would prepare to stop the enemy incursion instead. Therefore, it was necessary to use a method that would clearly illustrate the pointlessness of taking hostages. He was right. If Remedios had her way, they might end up being unable to save anyone in the end. The Sorcerer King slowly lifted up the body of the boy by his feet. Your Majesty, let me. This is a job for me. Nia accompanied the Sorcerer King as he carried the boy to the place where Remedios had planted her banner. 
The sorcerer king laid the boy on the ground. Nia wetted a cloth with water from a water skin and wiped away the grime on the boy's face. His cheeks, his wrists and his thighs were all shockingly thin. It clearly illustrated the harsh conditions under which they lived. Those baffled bastards. Perhaps this should not be said, but do allow me to say it anyway. I am the king of the sorcerer's kingdom, and not the king of the people who reside in this country. Thus, I can calmly make this decision. I would choose to save a thousand people's lives over a single life. But if this boy alone were a citizen of my nation, I would prioritize saving him instead. If you cannot accept that, no, thank you very much. I can understand how you feel, your majesty is just. Hmm, what do you mean? My apologies. Ah, maybe it should be, your majesty is righteous. What on earth am I saying? She could not help but wonder. While she felt that this left him with nothing to reply with, the merciful and compassionate sorcerer king still answered her. Eh? Ah, no, I do not feel that I am just. And frankly speaking, just is sought to be determined by others. The motives for everything I do are very simple. Well, I have thought of spreading my reputation too. Nia recalled the matter of the statues. 